and also and also bear sons, would would ye tarry them for them till they were grown? Would ye stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes, that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. Fourteen. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And or Orpa, Orpa, Orpa said, kissed her mother in law. But Ruth clave unto her. Ruth chapter one verse twelve and fourteen. Amen. Amen. We will now have our prayer by Deacon Elect Jamal Roberts. Good morning, church. Good morning. Everybody pray with me. Please bow your heads. Please bow your heads and close your eyes. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you as humble as we can. We want to thank you for another day of life, health, and strength, family, and friends. We ask that you continue to guide us, strengthen us, and bless us, and forgive us for our sins. Dear Lord, heal us of any sickness and bad health. Deliver us from any hurt, harm, and evil. Lord, we ask that you heal this country of any wickedness or sickness ways. All these prayers we ask you, Son, in Jesus' name we pray. We love you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Help me lift Jesus. Preacher, 
Preach us, we are. Help me lift Jesus. Preach us, we are. Help me lift Jesus. I'll clap your hands. Help me lift Jesus. I'll pat your feet. Help me lift Jesus. Shout if you wanna. Help me lift Jesus. Shout if you wanna. Help me lift Jesus. I want you to lift him. Lift him. Lift him higher, 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 higher,
Good morning, everybody. Oh, that was a sorry good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and Amen. let us be glad, let us rejoice in it. Amen. 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 God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Uh, some of y'all might still be suffering from post licks and depression. <laughs> But I'm just here to tell you that God is still good. Yes, He is. And, and uh, you know, regardless of how things worked out, we still here. Amen. There ain't been no apocalyptic occurrences. We still here. Yeah, yeah. And God is still good. Father in heaven, we thank you for the privilege of standing before your people one more time and sharing the unadulterated word of God. So we ask you right now, Lord, for preaching power. Hide, O green, behind the cross and allow your word to go forth with power and clarity that someone may be convinced that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So we thank you today. We praise your name today. We lift you up today. And we ask it all in Jesus' name and for his sake. And all of God's people said amen. Amen. Now, our message for today is coming from the book of Ruth, chapter 1. As we were studying the book of Ruth in the Bible study a few weeks ago, I knew very then that I wanted to come back because I just left too much meat on the bone. And, uh, you know, the way we do the Bible study is kind of um, like a, a, a Bible survey. And we can't go into depth in areas that may be quite uh, a, a lot more uh, appropriate for the time in which we live. But that, that, but uh, uh, God is good. There's a word. There is a word from the Lord, and, and, and God. Uh, the people always need a word. Uh, you know, with this, this, the Book of Ruth was written during the time of the judges and, and uh, there was a, a, a recurring theme in the judges uh, there was no king over Israel and everyone did what was right in their own eyes that was the the nature you can let it think just like that there was no king in Israel and everyone did what was right in their own eyes. And during that time, there was this, the family of Elimelech. Elimelech lived in Bethlehem, the city of bread. Bethlehem literally, literally means the city of bread. And they were in, going into a famine. And because of the famine, they decided to leave Bethlehem in Judah and went to Moab because there was food in Moab. So they immigrated to Moab, not because the Lord told them to, because everyone did, it seemed right to them, because there was hard times in Judah, they went to Moab. Mm -hmm. Now, y'all might not remember this, but the Moabites, these were descendants of Lot. The Lot was the, nep the nephew of Abraham, and a uh, uh, Lot, had uh, children from his own daughters. So incest was part of their culture. So when Elimelech and, uh, and Naomi took their sons Malon and Kilion to Moab with them to flee the famine, you know, let, let me tell you something about famine. Famine, uh, we are we are all have experienced famine in one way or another. Uh, what we call uh, economic downturns. When, when the market collapses, it produces a, a famine, so to speak. When, there, when uh, the prices are high and resources are low, uh, the, the situations that uh, all of us can relate to, when there's more month than money, you, you think you need to do something because 
the bills come due and you don't have the money to pay your bills, famine, lack, uh, uh, economic disparity, economic uh, uh, difficulties. So this is what they were experiencing at that time. They, they went through this, this, this period of decline, this period of uh, economic calamity, so they left Judah and they went to Moab. And, and uh, uh, while they were in Moab, Malon and Kilion married Moabite women. The women of uh, Moab, uh, 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 Orpah and Ruth were the names of the Moabite women that, that the sons of Naomi and Elimelech married. And shortly after they were there, some time while they were there, Elimelech died. And the Moab uh, and uh, uh, Malon and Kilion also died. So Naomi was there with her two daughters-in-law. And, and uh, one thing about that culture, uh, it, it wasn't no men around, boy, you're in trouble. Wasn't no social security, wasn't no AFDC. Uh, and in Moab, uh, they, you were, it was every man for himself. So Naomi decided, that she needed to go back to Bethlehem. When she made the decision to go back to Bethlehem, she encouraged her daughters-in-law, Orpah and Ruth, to go back to their mother's house. Uh, let me just read verses 12 and 14. It's going to help us here. And, uh, Turn again, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. And if I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband also tonight and should also bear sons, would ye tarry for them till they were grown? Would ye stay for them from having husbands? Would ye stay for them? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is going out against me. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law. But Ruth clave unto her. That's what I want you to focus on right there. Ruth clave unto her. Clave. Uh, you know that we heard that word again in Genesis. A man to leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. So Ruth wanted to hold on to her mother-in-law the way a man will hold on to his wife. That's the image. And what we see in this is a picture of commitment. Ruth was committed to staying with Naomi. A picture of commitment. And, and, and one of the reasons I, I love this, this verse so much, when I do marital counseling, especially premarital counseling, when couples are getting ready to get married, uh, this is the, the scripture that I like to come to. Because this picture of commitment. Uh, if, if there's not commitment in the relationship, it's not going to last. And, and, and what we see here, although this was a daughter-in-law and mother-in-law, the level of commitment necessary for a husband and wife is right here. That's the level of commitment, total commitment. And we, and, 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 and in Ruth, we get this picture. <coughs> we get the picture more clearly with Ruth than we do with a whole lot of husbands and wives. Mainly because in this culture, <coughs> A wife was considered the property of a husband. But this relationship here is more on an equal plane. So it is for, for our culture to understand commitment, it, it gives, she, she paints the picture better than anybody else. A picture of commitment. They will, you know, I, I, Cleaving to her mother-in-law. You see, Orpah went back to what was familiar to her. 
And I just told you what was what she was familiar with. That's why they married them Jewish boys. Because the, uh, uh, the, they, they didn't have a whole lot of confidence in the Moabite men because they had been abused by them their whole lives. See, Moabite women would be subject to their own brothers wanting to mess with them. They'd be subject to their own fathers wanting to mess with them. They, uh, you're talking about just living in a toxic environment. So when those Jewish, young Jewish men, and these what uh, uh, Jewish men went, these, these two were Melon and Kilion, they were not the cream of the crop. Uh, my nickname for them over the years was Drip in Nosebleed. A couple of real wusses. I mean, here they, these were young men and they died from old men diseases. So they, they had health problems, they had all kinds of issues, but they, there was a moral uh, 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 superiority about them being raised up. As Jews, there was a, they had a, 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 a spiritual connection that the men of Moab would not have had. And, and um, in spite of their challenges, the Moabite women saw them as, a, as an absolute upgrade. I mean, the, those Moabite women, uh, Ruth and, and, and uh, Orpah, saw them as an absolute upgrade over the men of Moab. Uh, they knew how they were going to be treated by the men of Moab. They knew how they had been treated. But Orpah chose to go back to that. She went back to what was familiar to her. But Ruth clave to her mother-in-law. This old Jewish matriarch who loved God and taught her to love God too. Now, when we talk about commitment, commitment is literally putting yourself out there for something that uh, is out of your control. When you're, you are committed in a relationship, you, that, that means you're going to do what you're supposed to do. And, and then commitment requires careful consideration. Uh, uh, Daisy, read that 15th verse for me. Commitment requires careful consideration. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her God. So wait a minute now. She said, Your sister-in-law, this is this is Naomi talking to Ruth. And she said, Thy sister-in-law is gone back to her people and to her gods. Hebrew Daisy. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. Uh, uh, return thou after thy sister-in-law. Uh, uh, this is Naomi trying to convince Ruth. You might want to do the same thing, baby. But Ruth got to thinking about that thing. R Ruth got to thinking about it. Ruth was remembering what she had to deal with with her own brothers trying to have sex with her. Uh, Ruth had got to remembering how her old daddy tried to mess with her. Come on. And Ruth gave a careful consideration about how things were in the past. She, there was no illusion on her part. She, she wasn't finna sugarcoat it. And she said, I, I'd rather go into the unknown with you than to go back to that. Amen. And you say, and see the other girl, she went back to, to her gods, little G. Go back to her people who were incestuous and, and immoral and, and, and decadent. She chose to go back. But after thinking about that, let me tell you something. See, we ain't gonna never be able to get what God has for us until we just absolutely, we're never gonna get to the next level, to the highest level, until we recognize where we are. 
Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Until you recognize that you are a sinner, you are not going to seek a savior. You need to recognize where you are right now. Because if you always do what you always did, you always going to get what you always got. Insanity it, it, uh, it, is described as doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So if you're always around these jacked up people and all you get is bad results, and if you go back to that, what you going to get? More bad results. Ruth understood that. Uh, instinctively, Ruth knew that she could not do, her life was not going to be any better if she went back there. She might not know what's in front of her, but she knows what's back there. She made careful consideration. You got to recognize the depravity of your current situation. And, 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 and don't rely on yourself or man. Uh, Jeremiah 17 and 5 says, that says, Cursed be the man that trusted the man that maketh flesh his arm, whose heart departed from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert and shall not see the good when it comes. You see, if you don't recognize, if you don't be honest about your current situation, when the good comes, you won't even know it. You're so used to bad that when something good comes along, you won't even recognize it. You won't even see it. Careful consideration. You got to be honest about what you're dealing with. You got to be honest about yourself. You need to be honest about the environment in which you live. You need to be honest about the people in your life. You need to be honest. Yeah. You, you can't turn a, a, a snake into a lion. It's not going to happen. If, if, if somebody has totally no character and you insist on uh, uh, being with them, you can expect what comes when you're dealing with somebody with no character. Yeah. Careful consideration. But commitment requires a made up mind. They can read that next verse. Read verse 16 for me. Commitment requires a made up mind. Check this out. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whether thou goest, I will go. She said, well, wait a minute. She, she said, please, don't, 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 uh, don't even make me leave you. Or, or make me not want to follow after you. Keep reading, Daisy. For whether thou goest, I will go. For wherever you go, I'm going. Keep reading, Daisy. And where thou lodges, I will lie. Where you live, I'm going to live. And thy people shall be my people. This is the one I love more than. And thy God, my God. Your people going to be my people. And your God, my God. Now, let me unpack that one for a minute. Because that one loaded for bad. Where you live, I'm going to live. Now, that's easy to understand now. But your people going to be See, when you marry somebody, this is why I like to use this in the, in the context of marriage. See, when you marry somebody, you marry into their family. And not all families got great history. Uh, all families got an Uncle Bobo. All families got a cousin Pookie. And a cousin Pookie and Uncle Bobo. Man, please, y'all just have to keep the bell money ready because uh, that's just how I roll with them. Uh, Cousin Pookie, uh, when he comes to the house, you got to put your pocketbook up because that's just how he is. Everybody got kinfolk like that. Uh, everybody got uh, got that, that crazy uncle that uh, get drunk at the family reunion and they want to turn it up. And it might be like that. So so it's, it's but young people, you make the decision that your people are going to be my people. Now let me put this in the context of immigration. The immigrants here. Ruth is going to be an immigrant in Bethlehem. She was at home in Moab, but her home wasn't going to be good for her, so she had to go somewhere else. Here's the thing about immigration. 
most of the people that come to America, don't, they, they come because they believe they've heard about the American dream. And that's why they come. They, 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 they know their homeland is it, it, not going to be good for them. They, in fact, they, they, they know that if I stay here, I'm probably going to get killed. It's a folks fleeing their native land, they want to come to America because regardless of what some folks say, uh, America is still the, the best place in the world if you want to come and you want to make something about yourself. If you want a life. The American dream is it, the greatest selling tool in the world. People come here from all over the world because they believe in the American dream. And, and Ruth said, uh, said, your people are going to be my people, and your God, my God. The God you serve, I'm going to serve. The government that you swear allegiance to, I'm going to swear allegiance to. Remember now, their God, and then, uh, uh, Israel was a theocracy, where God was the head. At this time, they were governed by judges that God chose. Now, eventually, they're going to want them some kings, but they were living under the judges. And the judges were in tune with what God wanted. The judges recognized that God raised them up for such a time as this. So, in, in the, the, the context of immigration, those folk that swear allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Everyone that 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 comes with the intention of pledging allegiance, they usually be serious about that thing. But when you, you we see this young woman pledging allegiance to her mother-in-law. A, a, a wife, a bride, needs to pledge allegiance to the union with her, her husband at that same level. I'm going to give 100% of me. And we both agree to give 100% of themselves. There ain't no 50 50 in marriage. See, 50% times 50% ain't number 25%. But 100% times 100% is, th is, is 10,000. Y'all do the math? 50% times 50% is 25%. But 100% times 100% is 10,000. That's what happens when a husband and a wife give 100% of their self to each other. That level of commitment it increases the family dynamic exponentially. But, but if both of y'all give it half, oh, no, they, they didn't catch it. They, they plumped math, they, they, they didn't catch that part. Don't marry somebody thinking that you're going to put 50% into the marriage. Don't marry somebody thinking that if I put 50% in and they put 50% in, we got 100%. It don't work that way. Well. That's like riding around on a car that with one tie got air in it. Commitment. That's why I love this book so much. It teaches us what true commitment looks like. Because most of us just that we can't understand. We, we don't know what it's going to take. Well, I'm here to tell you it takes all of you. Total commitment. That's what we get with, with that, that. That's the picture that Ruth is painting. Total commitment. It works like that in marriage. It works like that in community. It works like that in government. Where everybody is committed 100%. You're not worried about what you can get out of it. As, as John Kennedy once said, ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. 100%. When everybody gives 100% of whatever God has instilled in you, whatever God has gifted you in, if you give it 100%, same word, it would work the same way in the church. 
when everybody give 100% of their talent, 100% of their time, you gotta be your, you gotta do what you're supposed to do. But give all of you, surrender it all. That's what surrendering to Christ means. So we, we, every time we we had the end of every service, every preacher, if you're doing the job right, is going to extend an invitation to Christian discipleship. And what we ask at that time is for people to consider where they are. If you, if you die right now, would you go to heaven or hell? Consider where you are. Have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? <laughs> And if the answer to that is no, if, if, if that's what you want, you want to stay that way, then don't make a decision. Your decision is already made. But if you want to go to heaven, you need to come to Jesus. And, and, and it requires a made-up mind. you got to make a decision. Are you going to be committed to Christ 100%? And, and, and we look at this next verse. You got to be willing to live with the consequences. Our oh, days are picking up right there, the 17th verse. When thou diest, will I die? And there will I be buried. She said, Where you die, that's where I'm going to die. Where you get buried, that's where I'm going to get buried. Keep reading, Daisy. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if I put death for thee and me. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything other than death part of us. Now, when you get married, that needs to be your mindset. I, I, I was uh, asked by a friend of mine the other day, he said, man, how, how you been able to stay? He done went through a couple of wives, and he had a problem with the third wife. He said, how you been able to stay married all the years, the same woman? I remember when one of my friends had uh, mama died and they had, um, you know, they just informed me. And uh, when I got to talking with uh, one of uh, my friend's sisters, she said, uh, uh, and uh, she said, you still married to the same woman? Still about four or five men in the same amount of time. I said, yeah, still married to the same woman. And when my friend asked me the other day, how you stay married that long? I said, well, when I, before I got married, I had already decided that I was going to stay for the long haul. Before I got married, see, I knew whoever I married, I was going to stay married to. Because I had made the decision beforehand that when hard times come, you see, I done seen a whole lot of stuff. I went, I went 20 when I got married. I was 35 years old. So I done went through life. I experienced enough to know that it wasn't going to be easy. And so when hard times come, I'm going, I'd already made up in my mind that I was going to tough it out. And guess what? Hard times came. We, we were in the struggle. Uh, we, we, we were in a situation where we simply had to rely on each other. We had to, we had to trust each other. Even when we didn't know how things were going to come out. We knew that there was a God in heaven who loved us and we knew that he was going to supply our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But you got to make the decision beforehand that you're going to tough it out. You're going to live with the consequences. You see, Ruth knew that whatever it was, she knew it was so bad back then in Moab. She had more, she was, she was committed to being with her mother-in-law. Because she knew her mother-in-law treated her way better than her mother did. Her mother-in-law treated her way better than her daddy did. Her mother-in-law treated her way better than her, 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 her brothers did. And she said, where you go, I'm going. Where you die, I die. And then nothing going to separate me from you. But death. Husbands and wives, you y'all need to have the same mindset. Y'all need to have the same mindset. 
going into a marriage. Like the first sign of trouble is not your out. The first sign of trouble is when you need to get on your knees and say, Lord, help us. Because God said, I'm going to supply your needs. You see, marriage is God's idea. And when you do it his way, they ain't got a way of working out. You can't do it your way. You do it your way, you're going to end up messed up. And everywhere you go, going to be messed up. You, 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 you leave one family, go start another one. Well, guess what? You got to keep your vision. You got to keep it. You're going to be on child support for that first group of children you, you, you dropped off. You, 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 a man with six kids and all under one roof, all you got to do is buy one loaf of bread. And all your kids eat off one loaf of bread. But if you got kids scattered all over town, you got Santa got one, uh, your, uh, uh, Rebecca, your other baby mama, and uh, Tammy Sue, the other baby mama, and, 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 and Helen, the other baby mama, and then you got a baby mama that over in another county named Tamika. Well, you got five, six children, four different baby mamas. You got to buy four different loaves of bread. And quite frankly, Tamika, other children are going to eat off that bread. And you might as well get over it. Uh, you, you come by baby house and that outfit that you bought the little Johnny, the other baby wearing it. You need to get over it. See, if you bought that at your house with your kid, you'll hand it down and go to one of your other children. Commitment. You see, when you do things according to your own devices, see, the Proverbs tell us to, to trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not into our own understanding. With, in all our ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. When we, when we allow the word of God to dictate what we do, then that, that level of commitment that I'm talking about, you'll be able to do. It makes sense to you. When it's time to, to make these careful considerations, when your considerations are based on the word of God and not the, uh, and not the mores of man. Well. You know, y'all know how I am. Y'all know I don't preach the more. I mean, I wish I could preach like that. I just preach what's there and I, I tell her how God did to me. She said, if the Lord do, do so to me, if anything other than death parties, we're talking permanent stability, no turning back, no, no regrets. You make the decision, you make the right decision with, with no no turning back. It's like coming to Jesus. Uh, I, the the hymnologist say, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. There's no turning back. No turning back. The cross before me. The world behind me. No turning back. No turning back. I'm not turning back. I'm committed to following Jesus. I'm committed to living my life in a way that brings glory and honor to God. No turning back. Daisy, read that 18th verse for me. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. Naomi realized that she couldn't talk out of it. Let me tell you something. I was in the uh, store the other day with my nephew, uh, Glory. Uh, Glory had to work today. Uh, and Gloria, there was a boy that went to school with Gloria that saw him. And, um, and, and, and I'm just listening to their conversation. And the boy was talking to Gloria he said, uh, he's just, uh, you can see that he had began to make a spiritual journey. 
But this same boy, when he saw the lawyer, see, when the lawyers in school, they used to tease the lawyer because the lawyer was a, a devout Christian and he lived it out. In fact, the kids at school called him Pastor D-Lo. That was his nickname. And, and the children recognized that he was a young man walking with the Lord and that was the influence that he had on his peers. They saw him and they called him Pastor D-Lo. Come on in. They saw him. And they recognized God's anointing on his life. And it made an impact. He, I don't even think he realized it at the time. And I told him that's what was going to happen. And that young man saw him yesterday. And he, he you can, and I don't know if he was just faking it or what, but he seems to see to me. But he saw that he wanted Delorean to know that he was walking with the Lord. This is the same one that used to give him a hard time when he was in school. You see, let me tell you something. When people know that you committed to the Lord, they're going to quit messing with you. They're going to quit talking about you because they're going to wish that they had what you got. The only reason they were messing with you in the first place is because they, they know what the, the scriptures say. They, they know that their life a mess. They anticipate it's going to get worse. And they know ultimately they're going to end up in hell. And they're mad at you because they know you got a better future. They're mad at you because they, you got a destiny that they, can't, they could only imagine. They mad at you, they teasing at you because uh, you, you have a, a place in heaven that they don't have. So they mad, they angry, they, they, they treat you with... They, with